feels a decent fish. I've just cut some pellet out there because today I'm fishing really for any sort of silver fish, anything there is. And I'm at a beautiful lake, this is Pisces fishery, it's a caravan park. Not too big this one, but it's a good, good fish to start with. And it's a, a private syndicate water, so you don't get too many people here, you know, just, just a few anglers that are staying in the caravans. We're in the little village of Welney and it's just on the Norfolk Cambridge border. It's a little, well a little rod, it's a probably about a six ounce rod which is a good fish to start with. And this is one of the species I'm targeting today. Silverfish, now silverfish are roach, rud, bream, skimmers, tench, any silverfish really or anything other than carp. Except crucian carp are called a class of silverfish. And there's a good start, a beautiful little rud. And I've potted, I'm targeting the bigger fish if possible because I'm fishing, feeding with pellet, mainly pellet, and then just pop that fish in the net. And then fishing pellet, maggot, anything on the hook, whatever happens. But I'm actually feeding with pellet and cupping it in to try and target the larger silver fish. I've already potted in some pellet and, and I'm swapping the hook bait. So at the moment I've got a couple of maggots on the hook. Just until I see what, what fish arrive. A maggot usually is a good, a good starting point. You know, they'll give you instant action and then you can progress to use an expander pellets and, and I'll go through that as the session goes on. But it's a beautiful summer's day, it's perfect for fishing. It really is gorgeous, nice and warm. I've plumbed the depth and I am fishing on the bottom, but still my bait's being intercepted. That last fish, was the, which was my first one, is, was intercepted on the way down. It often happens in the summer, but, but usually if you're potting in bait, Usually the fish stay quite well down. There's a bite now. I'm into another good fish straight away. Instant action. Just potting in pellet. This, feel, this feels like a skimmer. Just got a fairly fine elastic, a number six elastic. Nice browning. Orange elastic. see what sort of fish this is. Might be a big roach, I don't know. It feels like just like a good fish. The, I'm after, really, I am after larger, trying to avoid the smaller fish. And I, oh no, this is a really cracking, really big rud. On the bottom though this was. You don't usually catch rud on the bottom, except sometimes you can catch big, big rud on the bottom. There you are. But it's right where I, I potted in. Potted in all that food and there, look at that. I mean, two fish in two casts and a, a cracking rud. Look at the size of that. Beautiful, bright red fins, greenish back. Lovely fish. Gorgeous. So they're the fish we're after, any, any sort of silver fish there is. And it seems like they're already packed on to that, that potted in food. And, and the action is almost instant, even though I'm fishing on the bottom. The fish are obviously milling around over that tight knit bed of feed. When I'm going out, I'm trying to drop. I don't want any fish to intercept the bait on the way down. I want that bait to get to the bottom, so I'm almost trying to drop it straight down. It doesn't always work. Oh, I'm into another one straight away, another big fish. Elastic's out, working really. You can tell when your elastic's working well, it's really stretched out. Another goodish, don't know what it is, another big rud perhaps. Just lost that one, just lost that one. I was too busy mucking about with it, really, for cameras, as uh, I do sometimes. And with barbless hooks, if, if they tend, if the fish get a little bit of a, 
just a little bit of leeway, the hook can sometimes pull out. But that was instant. I went in and it was a cracking fish instantly. Fishing double maggot over pellet. Always a good way to start for silverfish if you want plenty of action. Now what I've done, when I potted the pellet in, I've, I've picked a marker on the far bank. Well, I've picked a reed that's sitting on its own. I've picked that, that's, that's my fishing point. So every time I go out, I'm dropping my bait on exactly the right point, exactly where I cupped in the pellets. And any fish that are there feeding on the bottom on pellet will also come across a maggot or whatever I've got on the hook. And usually if you get a quiet spell, oh, there's a little bite now, usually if you get a quiet spell is when a big fish moves into your, your peg. Oh, another fish. It's almost Im immediate action, all that little movement on the float. I thought it would be a skimmer, but it feels like a roach, this one. Still, it's non-stop. Just over that bed of pellets. Oh, it's another rud. I've got these rud almost feeding on the bottom now, which is unusual. You know, rud normally a surface feeding fish. And, yeah, another rud, another rud. See the beautiful colours and if you look at that, you can always tell a rud by the, if you look at the top lip, how it's receding, how it's coming back. That's because they're normally surface feeding, but they've gone down, obviously gone down on this, this bait I'm putting in. Well, they're lovely fish, beautiful colour. And that's sometimes a problem and that's why I'm potting in bait today is to try and get a lot of bait down, concentrated on the bottom to avoid, although that's a good size fish, but to perhaps try and target the bigger skimmers, maybe an odd tench even in this sort of situation. But it's always a matter of feeding, keep feeding with the pole cut, and I'll go through that in a minute, to, to get the fish there in your peg, get them competing for food. That's what you have to do in a tight area, I told you that it's exactly, I've picked the marker so you can drop your pole line and your pole rig exactly, exactly where you're fed. So I'm trying, and I'm trying to drop everything straight down to, to make sure the maggot gets to the bottom. And I might adjust the shotting in a little while because there's so many fish here that they're still fish in mid water, even though all the food is on the bottom. The fish are milling around. And when you're fishing for, skim particularly skimmers, they always take a little bit of time. You usually see them just pulling at the bait, knocking it a bit. They always take a little bit of time before the float slides away. But normally once it does go, it's a, a good quality fish. Of course, because it, I mean, I said it was a lovely warm summer's day and because it is so warm, the fish tend to want to come up in the water. Where, whenever you fish in the summer, the, the oxygen levels are always at their better, best near the surface. And this is the case here. That's why quite often fish stay near the surface. It floats gone. I missed that bite and it was a beautiful, almost like a liner. Beautiful bite on the sort of when it had settled. You'd almost guarantee to hook that fish. Straight away it's gone again, dropping in. So this will be a smallish fish. These are the ones I'm really trying to avoid. I'm catching them, but obviously they're not tiny fish, they're all good quality. But the, I know the bigger skimmers will be on the bottom. And perhaps later a change change of bait to pellet, might get us some bigger fish, another lovely one of those beautiful well coloured rud, perfect condition. It, if you look at it, you just said it's never been caught before, if you look at that fish, pristine condition.
just shipped out again and and I've just just dropped the float in and it's whizzing about backwards and forwards I'm trying to get the bait to go to the bottom but there's so many fish here because I know once it gets down there, there will be slightly bigger fish but at the moment I mean it's cracking fish in a good size but at the moment it's a the fish are intercepting the bait on the way down. Seems like we've had an invasion of rudd at the moment. And I'm, I'm not loose feeding, so I'm only cupping bait in, but they're all, these fish are still always aware, even though the bait is on the bottom, that they'll be swimming around probably mid-water above it, knowing that there's food there. going to whiz out and see if we can... I'll put a pellet on and just to see if it, it makes a difference. Sometimes it can, a pellet can sometimes get to the bottom where a maggot won't. Just slip the pellet on the hook. When you ship out, if you keep the pole low as you ship out and the rig in the water, you find you won't get any tangles, just keep that rig in the water until you until you get to where you're fishing. Then if you lift it, just lift it. Be careful because a pellet can come off easily and then drop it. I'm dropping it straight down. I'm hoping that that pellet is going to get to the bottom. If it goes straight away, which it has, it means it hasn't got to the bottom. And straight away, even with pellet, probably a slightly bigger fish, not massive, but even with pellet, they're intercepting the bait. They're so greedy and hungry today, these fish. It's a nice roach. Oh, that's a lovely roach. Look at that. So this, the pellet probably got to the bottom or maybe the, maybe the rudd don't like the pellet so much, but there's a roach. Look at the difference bit more silvery, the, the fins are a more orange tinged rather than the, the red of the rudd. And if you look at the lip, it's got a normal mouth and, and the lip is, the, the actual lips are not receding, the top lip is normal and just sloping back. A little bit slimmer than, the, than a rudd, but that's a lovely, beautiful fish. Probably five or six ounces. But it still took, it didn't let that that bait get quite to the bottom, it still took the bait on the drop. The rig I'm using today is, um, is a 0.3 of a gram rig, but starting from the hook, this is an 18 Drennan carbon barbless. And it's a ready tied, sometimes I use ready tied hooks, and it's tied to two and a half pound line, but it's a, a good strong hook. So it doesn't matter what, if I hook a tench or bream, whatever, I know that hook's not going to straighten. So the hook length is, there, there's the, the, the pack, the hook pack. And there are, you know, I quite often use ready tied. They're brilliant, they're a barbless hook. Ready tied to two pound breaking strain line. And they'll, honestly, they'll, they'll get in a six pound tench, no problem, as long as your elastic's okay. And then, I've got a 12 inch hook length, and if you have a look just there, just above my, and I'm going to show you, I've got a new knot that I learned. You always learn something in fishing. I've got a new knot which I learned, I'll show you that later. So there I've pulled three shot together. They're little, there's, there's two number 11s and a number 12, and I've, I've bolted them together to try and get this bait quickly down to the fish. And then about nine inches above that, I've bolted all the shot. There. There's nine number 11 shot there, all bolted together, in a little bolt, almost like an Olivet would be, where you've got the, everything totally down. And then up to the float, and the float is, the float is 0.3 of a gram. It's a browning Everest float. It has a, a carbon stem, a painted carbon bristle, always, I like to put three pieces of silicon on there 
Try, don't ever use one. Always use at least two, but I like to use three. And if one does break, you've always got a spare one. And then just above the float there, just above the eye, this eye goes into bolster and it's quite weak, so I always put a small piece, and nobody hardly ever does this, but I put a little piece of silicon, you can hardly see it, a little piece of silicon just above there. So it's like a double float ring there, and the float will never break then. And you know like those times when you hook that big fish and you lose it, it comes off the hook, uh, and, and the float flies back, it usually smashes the float. Well, if you put this little piece of silicon, the float stays perfect. And then up to the connector, and I've got about 18 inches from the tip of the float to the connector, so a reasonably shortish line. Just a small loop there, tied a small loop, overhand loop, make sure that, so that you get your strength. There's a connector. Always make sure you clip those connectors up. Loads of times I see anglers and they don't push, can you see that connector's pushed tightly together? Which means that little collar that holds it in can't go back. And then we've got the number six browning high visibility elastic, loads of stretch, which is what you want when you're catching a big variety of fish. You know, we're catching big and small, so you need elastic that can handle big, but also be nice for small fish. Try that, that last fish I had on pellet, but I'm going to put double maggot on again. Always experiment with baits. Double maggot on. And because I'm feeding with a pole cup, I'm not feeding every cast. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm putting in a good pot full of feed and then leaving it, then fishing on it until I think the fish have sort of gone off and then, and then go on it again. Remember to keep that rig low as you're shipping out. And then as you get to the point, this is what you've got to watch, as you get to the point of where you're going to fish, almost try and drop it straight down. It means that the bait goes down through the water quicker and there's less chance of being intercepted, but of course it doesn't always work like that because this time there's big, even big fish hanging over that and this is, it feels like quite a good fish as well. Probably a nice rud, rud or roach. But there's big fish, they know that feeds there and they're swimming about tightly over that area. Another, another one of those beautiful rud, this one. And lots of them. You know, if you get that feeding really tight, it's amazing how many of these silverfish you can catch. It's almost non-stop action. You can see there where the, the fish has absolutely smashed one of the maggots. If you can look there, smash one of the maggots, the other one's just touched, but look at that. It's absolutely, really is pristine, gorgeous fish. Barbless hook, so it comes out very easily. Beautiful. I think I'll have to put a pellet on now, because that, that one, and this is why I like to, to fish and feed with different baits. Sometimes you just can't get a maggot through the fish, and sometimes you can't get a pellet through either. I really want, if I can, to, for the bait to get to the bottom, but it doesn't matter because we're targeting silverfish, so... Really, it doesn't matter where you catch them, but it's just if you get to the bottom, you catch bigger fish. I've dropped that pellet in. And it's shot off again. <laughs> this is just incredible fishing. Just drop that pellet in and straight away it's off. Just another good average size fish. But all action, and this is what silverfish fishing is all about. Usually it's all action, non stop. Catch one, out again, another one. But these are lovely, they are nice quality. They are good. I've to net all these fish. Another one, it's almost identical to the last, but. Ah, oh, just beautiful. That took a pellet, the other one took maggot. I'm just trying my hardest to get these. But they're still really plump, five or six ounces. Gorgeous fish. Non-stop. 
you have a look at this pellet, let's just, I'll show you how I'm hooking this pellet on because they're a bit, they are, they are soft, so you need to be careful and try and push the hook, get the point of the hook in the, in the middle of the pellet and then just tease it, if you just use your finger just to tease it round onto the hook, like that, so you get as much of the, the hook as possible and then the little point of the hook just coming out and then just once again drop it straight down and watch that float and see what happens ideally I want it to settle but it's not look there's the fish there straight away bashed it might have even taken it off the hook I've only got to bash it once and it usually comes off the hook I'll just check it yeah it's just bashed it and knocked it off that's why sometimes when there's lots of fish it's as well to try mag it Put, let's put maggot on this time and just swap the baits around until you get the right combination although I'm not feeding any maggot maggots are a little bit tougher they can get to the bottom or a fish can bash it and it won't uh, won't come off the hook you can ship it out a little bit quicker just keep it down so you don't tangle the rig fish there straight away because my float lifted up. It lifted up again. Now it's moving. Can you see that it's moving? The fish there. A little tiny fish it was that one. Didn't matter, it just just left it so I can drop it straight in again. There must be millions of fish there over that feed area now. It looks like the bait's got to the bottom this time, so the chances are to wait a little bit longer for a bite because you're not catching on the drop but the chances are you might catch a skimmer or a bigger fish there it goes just slid away that float then you could guarantee that would have been a skimmer they will be on the bottom the bream will be on the bottom and these rudd and roach are up on the surface bait smashed to smith the bait absolutely smashed to smithereens and that's the reason I'd missed I'd missed two bites then and the mag, one of the maggots was over the point of the hook where the fish they take the bait in they blow it out and the point of the hook gets covered and you then cannot of course the, the hook will not penetrate but that's caused by the fish taking it in feeling the hook and then trying to blow it out again when I'm fishing, can you believe this, I always look for, for a good sized maggot to put on the hook. I don't know why, but I, I always actually look for a, for a nice fat one that's probably got a good feed spot in it as well, that usually means it's fresh. And then, when you put the maggot on the hook, just make sure, I'll do that, I'll just do that again, make sure that when you get hold of the maggot, just squeeze, if you squeeze the maggot, and, and hook it on the fat end and really squeeze it hard, you tighten the skin of the maggot and then try to hook it as shallow as possible so it just penetrates the skin of the maggot. So you squeeze the maggot really hard, just nick the skin without any fluid coming out of the maggot. And then they stay fresher and wriggle and move. Although I'm not sure that movement is what we want today because these fish are just taking everything. But this is normal. What normally happens on this sort of session, we start fishing. The smaller fish are there, but as you keep feeding, then the larger fish come in. They bully the other ones out. They usually come in and just bully the other fish out. And this is a, just a normal fishing session. You would get fish immediately at the start, small fish, and they're going mad another good rud. It must be a good rud because it took it straight off the surface and I've not, I'm, and I'm cupping in a load of bait so the fish, the fish are up in the water but I'm not loose feeding. Another one of those big rud, I might just be able to swing this one, although it is a big fish. 
Oh, oh lovely. Oh, those beautiful big rud. Incredible fishing, just non-stop. And this is just over potted bait. Putting the bait in and, and dropping the hook bait over the top. Loads of these are rud about at the moment. What I'm going to do is change tactics a little bit. I'm going to go on a heavier rig. I'll feed again. I'll talk about a bit about pole cup. I'm going to feed again. Nice pot full of feed and show you exactly what I do with that. And then go out with a heavier rig, more bait, perhaps three or four maggots, two pellets on the hook, and see what happens. It's non stop action, but they're, they're just a little bit, probably because it is a very, very warm summer's day. I'm feeding pellets today with a pole cup and the main feed are these Slicks marine pellets. They're five mil, they're quite big, very hard, they sink immediately. You don't need to treat them at all. But they're, they're, if you look at them, they're very, very dark and usually brilliant for skimmers and bream. Brilliant attractor, but they're very, and they're very hard. They soften up once they go into water. It's almost like a compressed ground bait, really, when you think of it. Go, but it goes straight to the bottom. That's what I'm trying to do. And then, on the hook, I've got a mixture. I've got, I favour these. This is a, a ringer's bag up. Uh, they're called cool water expander pellets. Quite big. Now, there's some of them there. They're quite large pellets. Probably they swell up to sort of five or six mil in size once you treat them. So I've got those and then I've got some smaller ones which I also like to use which are the normal Van der Nine expander carp pellets. The natural ones these and they they're a much I'll show you I'll compare the two sizes if you if you look at the the ringers bag up and the Van der Nine you look at the two different sizes, you can see they're quite, but you need a bit of variety. You may need a bigger pellet, you may need a smaller one, so I like to use different sorts. And I'm cupping in mainly the slicks, but with a few expanders as well. And you need, you must have, for this work, you must have a cupping pot. There you are, this is a pot, a pole pot, which screws on the end of a special section on your pole, and you need that for feeding. And, and that's exactly the same length as my top kit, the top kit that I'm fishing with so that you can, you can feed with it at exactly the right distance. So let's fill that with pellets and I'm putting quite a few of these in. There's so many fish here, it doesn't seem to matter how much I feed. So, and this is a 240 milliliter pot, so it's a good, good size. Plus some expanders on top. Treated expanders, so they're most, almost, I haven't filled the pot right up. If you fill it right up, you find that you spill too many as you ship out. And then when you're shipping out, just take your time, make sure you're using the pole rest, just take your time as you ship out. Watch that you don't get any jolting or bumping as you're coming along. And the, and the real part to watch is as your pole comes off the end of your pole roller, because it tends to try and flip up in the air. But once you've got that, then there's just a nice steady movement. And I'm gonna dump all these in one spot. Such a big volume of bait, even though there's loads of fish up in the water, you know there's something, they're big heavy pellets. You know there's something going to get down. And the more you feed, 
then the more likely you are to catch larger fish. And I'm also going to change my rig. Going onto a heavier rig, bigger hook, and pulling, I'll go through this rig a little bit in a minute, but I'm gonna pull all my shots down, all of them down onto the top knot of the hook length. Put them all down, bolt everything together so that I can get my bait on the bottom. In three maggots on the hook, try a bigger bait, three maggots. I might even put four on in a minute. I've got a 16 hook on here, it's quite a nice big heavy hook. Three maggots would probably catch bigger fish now. Might take a little bit longer to get the bite, but chances are we're going to catch bigger fish. I've got stronger elastic in a bigger, if you use a bigger hook, you can use stronger elastic. Hook size really always, always is, is decided on by the size of the elastic. Hook and elastic have to be matched together. So I've dropped that in, big, big bulk, dropped it straight down, but the fish are, the fish really are going crazy today. They are going mad. It's a bigger fish, but straight on it, heavier elastic. I can probably put more pressure on the fish and lift these, because I've got stronger elastic. Oh, this is a big roach, lovely big roach, but I can swing this one because I've got heavier elastic. And look at that, cracking fish. Three maggots, it's probably about five or six ounces, that roach. Smashed it straight away. But that was, Feeding bulk with a pole cup, you know, the fish are really going mad over the top of that feed. It's, it's, it's amazing how many fish are just milling around above that feed area. In fact, there's probably too many fish. I want them to settle down a bit. It's a very warm day and of course you know that, that what happens when you're fishing, when it's very, very hot, the bigger fish like bream and skimmers tend to be a little bit, they tend to come on a little bit later in the afternoon, you know, just as it cools down. Oh, looks like I lost my bag of pellets. So I've got this big bulk rig trying to get through these fish. And it's almost as if they won't let me. There's just so many. Ah. Lovely. I get, at least I get a chance of a rest when the, when, when the bait gets to the bottom. The action is so, so fast and furious. There's a fish there now, just lifted it. See the floats just lifting. There's a fish there, just moving it a bit. You just see my maggot is, is caught round the hook again. It's dropping in, waiting for that float to move. Ah, that's down, that's a better fish. I wonder what this is. Got a heavier elastic on now. I think it's just, ah, oh, this is a nice skimmer, I think. So it worked, that change to the, the change to the bigger bait, as long as it gets to the bottom, worked. You see the elastic's not coming out so much because I'm on a, a number 10 elastic now, I'm expecting some bigger fish. This looks like a nice skimmer. Oh, you see a lovely skimmer. These are the fish you want to catch, really. They're lovely. Skimmers and bream, if you can get through, these are more, a skimmer is more of a, a bottom feeding fish. It's a small, small bream, very slippery, very slimy, completely silver, and there's a slight recess from the head through. That's how you can always tell a bream, that slight recess there, very silvery, very aggressive. 
So the skimmers are feeding if you can get through. Try maggot again, three maggots. Get through those roach and rod and catch the skimmers and the bigger fish. It's always the case, if you can get to the bottom when fish are feeding like this, usually you'll catch slightly bigger fish. I've got all my weight bolt down to drop through those surface fish. Doesn't always work, but drop through. Usually just after you've potted in, there's a bit of excitement and fish are milling around. And if you leave it for a little while and let things settle down, then the fish gradually move to the bait on the bottom. So when you first feed, expect to catch a few fish on the drop. And then once it's settled, then you should start to catch a larger fish. And I'm on the bottom again, I'm looking for that little skimmer bite, which is usually just a slight pull down. And you can move your bait. With fishing for, with, once you're, if you're fishing with maggot for silverfish, you can move the bait a little bit. You can just tease, try and tease the fish by pulling the float slightly. There you are, see that? And I've got a response from the fish. It pulled the float down as I pulled it. So there's a fish there looking at the bait. I'll do it again. Tease it, tease it. See it pulling, the, see it pulling back? Hasn't taken it though. To tease the fish, I just move the pole at this end, just a slight movement, just with my hand as I, I draw back. Once, it, once the bait's on the bottom, just draw back and you can, you can sort of move your knee slightly one way or the other. If your pole's resting on your knee and your hand's there, you can move the pole one way or the other to tease the fish, to move the bait. I can take the tip of the pole to the left of the float and then just drag the float round one way or do it the other. You can just move it slightly along the bottom, just with a, a little slight movement between the pole and your hand and your knee, really. You coordinate the three. We call this, this is called inducing a bite. So the bait's on the bottom, the fish are looking at it and you have to try and induce the bite by slight movement. Pull the pole one way or the other. And it's the movement of the bait that attracts the fish. Brings the bait to their attention. And of course, once they spot it or spot movement, then they can, then they, they then come in and try and take it. And there immediately I've got a response again and it's gone. I lost that fish, just a... I've got a big hook on, strong elastic, so if a little fish gets hold of it, I'm probably going to lose it. It's one of those small roads. If it's a big fish, then I've got the right gear. But a number 10 elastic through three sections, it's quite heavy. A big hook. But it's over this, right over this feed. Slight lift, just a slight lift then, a slight movement. I'm fishing mainly for bigger fish now, so it's... more difficult to catch them. I mean, when you're fishing for big fish, you, you don't catch as many. You know, there are less of them, so... you stand less chance of catching. You don't get a bite immediately. It takes a little bit of time. There's a bite now. Fish has moved that. It's lifted it. It's actually lifted the bait up in the air that time. But because I've got three maggots on, I can lift it. And long, as long as the maggots look okay, I'll drop it straight back in again. 
over the top. Let it settle and then look for that, just inducing that bite. Looking just a pull. See that? Just a pull and a fish immediately reacted to it. It's all about how many bites you get and what happens. It's and how you react to it. You know, how many fish are there. And every time I move it, I'm getting a response from the fish. But if they're big fish, you usually hook them straight away. Just try and tease them. And keep swapping the baits. There's fish there all the time. There's one there now. Right up in the water that fish was. I think my bait's a bit a bit damaged. Let's have a look at that bait. You don't knock a fish every time, of course, but it was a skimmer because there's a bit of slime. Ah, look at that bait. There's two or three of the maggots are really chewed. Probably a small skimmer. Don't know why I missed the bite though, it's unusual to miss it. I'll try one of those big pellets on. See if that'll work. Big soft pellet on that heavy rig. As long as I can get that pellet to the bottom, then there's a chance of a bigger fish, and this is this feels like a good skimmer. That change to this heavier rig has worked, and I'll net this fish and then run through exactly how I've set it up. Right, do you know what I thought it was a skimmer, but it's a really big roach. Oh, cracking fish this. Right on the bottom on that big pellet. Probably 10 or 12 ounces, lovely, beautiful fish. Oh, look at that, it's a cracker. Just shows you pellet. Pellet will catch anything. Look at that, cracking roach. Beautiful fish. And you can see the difference. You've got this, this orange tinge fin, the silver fish, normal lip. Lovely, nice, meaty fish. Beautiful. We'll have a look at the rig I'm using. The hook is a 16 Drennan carbon barbel. It's a big, strong hook, just a bit bigger than the other one I was using. And the line is two pound breaking strain. We're only fishing for silverfish. It doesn't have to be that strong. And then I've got, say, a, a 10 inch hook length, but then I've bolted all the shot together there, the float's 0.3 of a gram, but I've bolted all the shot just above the knot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, number, number 10 shot, all bolted together to try and get everything down. There's so many fish there. The main line is 0.14, it's a, a browning pole line and breaking strain somewhere about three and a half, four pound. And up to the float, a similar shape float to what I was using, just a little bit more body on it. It's called a Rushmore, Browning Rushmore, 0.3 of a gram. It's got this lovely carbon stem and a beautiful painted carbon bristle. I love that, it really shows up well, particularly when you've got the sun coming from behind you. And a small sleeve, a small silicon sleeve above. You've got the, the loop there and a small silicon sleeve above. And then up to the elastic and the connector. 10 elastic browning, high visibility, just to handle these slightly bigger fish. There's the connector with, probably I've got, say, 18 inches to two foot of line between the connector and the float itself. But a nice, smooth, it will never tangle. The elastic comes out nicely with an internal bush. I like to use these internal bushes. What happens is that the line 
If you use an external bush, quite often the line can get caught behind it. So where possible, try to use an internal bush there and it's a much easier feel to it. So that's the rig, just a little bit, stepping up a little bit with bigger hook, slightly bigger lines and all the shot bolt together to get everything down to the bottom to where we've cut the feed so we can catch these bigger roach and bigger skimmers. It's gone a little bit quiet so I'm going to feed again and, and, and still the same policy, you know, a good pot full of pellet so that something at least gets to the bottom. I mean the fish in here is so incredible, so many fish. So some of the 5 mil slick pellets are hard ones and then I'm on the top just less of the small expander pellets. So a mixture of each, some soft, some hard. Just a good cupful. You know then that a big cupful, something's going to get to the bottom. You've almost got to surprise the fish, you know, the fish are, it's gone a bit quiet, the fish are not there. And I'm hoping that I can drop this in and some get to the bottom before the fish zoom in and intercept all the loose offerings, but they're quite heavy, those pellets, so bang, a big pot full in there. just to uh, get the fish every time it goes a little bit quiet when you stop to catch fish refeed again it's probably that they've eaten everything and then they drift away they're only there because I'm feeding them if I wasn't feeding them I wouldn't be catching them so and feeding is the most important part remember of fishing it's nice and easy good pot full of feed and then go straight on it with your bait nothing could be more simpler And that worked as well. Every time it goes a bit quiet, just put some more bait in. And as long as the bait gets to the bottom, then you get these better quality skimmers and bigger roach. I can usually tell by the way that the fish fight what they are. And this is sort of a bit steady, feels quite heavy on the hook. I'm guessing it'll be one of those nice skimmers. It's fighting a bit now. Is it? No, it's another one of those clonking great ropes. This is even bigger, this one. A beauty, they've settled on those pellets. Look at that, that's a great fish. Oh dear. These are better than the skimmers. How big's that? Oh, I'm guessing it must be 12 ounces or more. Beautiful roach, really big fish. Gorgeous, but that's that was on maggot. That was on two maggots. I'm swapping the bait about two maggots over those heavy pellets that are the only thing really that are getting to the bottom. Maggots are perfect. They're not even damaged. Real meaty fish. That lovely. I want to show you the knot that I use to tie my hook length to the main line, and this is a knot that I learnt last year always like to show a, a new knot when I'm doing a fishing program and knots are something which you know if you see them in a magazine or a book I don't know about you I can never understand them you know you can see the line you can't understand them somebody actually has to show them to you that's why I always like to show something of, of exactly how to do it and all you do if you imagine that you've got Let's just take a piece of this line. Imagine that you've got a hook length. And I'll take a piece of line off there for the hook. Imagine that we've got a hook on there. And then the main line. I'm using the same size line because it doesn't matter what you use. If you lay the two pieces of line together, I hope you can see this, but lay the two pieces of line together, side by side, like that. As I say, do you know what, can you believe this? I, I learned this not last year. There's something I didn't know, and I, I don't know the name of it. I think it's a nud I don't know not. If you lay the two pieces of line together, and you, you put them to form a loop, can you see that, put them to form a loop, and then twist the line. If you twist it, if you twist it, if you twist your finger and thumb, you'll find that you actually twist that line. Can you see where you've got this twist here? And then trap that twist 
trap that twist and imagine the longer piece there is your hook length. Pull that through, just pull it through the loop back towards you. You'll also have the little tag which is the other part of your main line. Push that through as well. Push that through, pull them together. Once, if you look at it, you get a, if you look at it side on, you get a, like a figure of eight, almost like a figure of eight. They've gone a little bit because it's, they're not exactly the same, but it doesn't matter, just pull them together, moisten them. I'm not gonna do it because if I moisten them, you'll see my head appearing in the picture, but you just wet, wet the line, just pull it tight, and that is an incredible knot. It's something like, I think something like 95% strong, as strong, so it's almost as strong as the line itself. Almost impossible to break. And when you trim those two ends off really tight, just trim them off with a pair of scissors, you get an incredibly small, neat knot. Just a very neat knot, just trim that. If I trim that, I'll show you exactly how neat that knot is. Just trim it there. Leave it a little bit, it doesn't matter if you leave it a little bit long. If I leave it a little bit long and then show you just how neat it is. And what happens is you get a really natural fall as well of bait through the water because it's a tiny knot and the two are really close together. I'm sorry I don't know the name of it. If anybody finds out the name, please ring me or email me and let me know what it's called. But it really is the best knot I've ever used for joining the hook length and the main line. Another cracking fish, this. It always, as I said earlier, it always takes a little bit of time for the bigger fish to move in there. They seem to be a little bit more cautious. But those the last two big cupfuls of pellet that I put in obviously are working now. The fish are resting a little bit more. You can see the elastic working. Just ease the fish back carefully. Once the, the pole is on the rest, you can just let it slip back behind you and then unship. I don't know. Like, like the knot, I don't know what this fish is. <laughs> oh, it's a clonking great rudd, I think. Just saw a big head up here there. Catch anything with this style of fishing. Yeah, I think it's a really... Just had a big roach, I think this is a real big rudd. Lovely fish, really fighting. Oh, that's a beautiful fish. Oh, must be nearly a pound, that one. Look at that for a rod. Those pellets have, have brought that fish in to feed. Real big fish. Right on the pellet. Only with two maggots on the hook, so not a big bait on the hook. Just two, mallet, two maggots, but the bait had got to the bottom. The fish was feeding, scooping up the maggots and the pellets. That's a cracking fish. And that's what normally you would expect as you go through the day for the fish to get gradually bigger. Fish are really increasing in size. They're all good quality roach and rudd or a skimmer now. I don't know what this is. This is probably a roach, I should think. Roach or rudd. But it's all big fish now over that pellet. And that's, that's what normally can happen. Not as big as that last one though, but still a good quality fish. They're cracking, lovely colours on these rudd. Oh, beautiful, gorgeous colouring. All quality. Fat, must be feeding on those pellets I'm putting in. That's why it's so fat. Another fish straight away. That was. A, I've just swapped back. I mean, it's there's lots of good size fish here, so I'll just swap back to that slightly lighter elastic, that number number six, and the pellet, and they seem to be taking the pellet much much better than the 
than the maggot now. I've weaned them onto it almost. See the elastic doing its job. What's this? Oh, this looks like a beautiful roach, just on that lighter rig. Roach are sometimes like that, you know. Perhaps the other rig was a bit heavy for these quality roach. Look at that, if you were catching a, a half pound fish every cast. There it is, a gorgeous roach. It's a lovely fish, I think, this one, to finish the program on, but just, yeah, look at that. Beautiful roach, probably about six or seven ounces. Lovely quality fish. It's taken that, with that big six mil expander of pellet, just taking it straight down on the drop. Beautiful fish. What a lovely way to end the program. And just, if you think about it, just feeding with a pole cup, feeding with a pole cup, getting the fish really concentrated into one tight area and then dropping your bait on is non-stop action. So it's perfect, it's the perfect way to catch silverfish on the pole and loads of them. I don't know how many I've caught, but lots. <laughs>